Tanchi, bonjour, hello everyone to our podcast listeners. We are so happy to be coming back with another episode of Presenting Our Presence. And as you know or may not know, Presenting Our Presence uh, is about highlighting the brilliance, the beauty, the intelligence, the creativity and the contributions of our Indigenous colleagues here at the University of Alberta. And today, I'm so happy to be co-hosting with Amanda Almond, who was a previous guest on episode 16. If you missed it, go listen to it. It's brilliant and beautiful about our relational ethics and her ties and relationality to the quilts in her family. So do check back on episode 16 for Amanda Almond. And today, she is with us as a co-host. Thank you, Amanda for joining us today to celebrate and have a conversation with our beloved sister, the colonial self-lover, Squawak goddess, Dr. Lana Whiskey Jack. Lana, thank you for joining us. And assistant professor in women's and gender studies here at the university. I'm an artist, uh, visual storyteller uh, as well. I hail from my Utsi connections, come from Sad Lake Cree Nation, but first and foremost, I'm an Alsinu Otaski. I'm a human of this earth. So it's great to be here. Me wait then. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. Merci for joining us. We also have Kyle Napier who is with us. Welcome back, Kyle. You're always with us. So please chime in also in the conversation as you have good relations and know Lana and Amanda uh, very well um, in your work together. So Amanda, I am gonna pass it to you to launch our first kind of inquiry or question uh, with Lana based on our, you know, preparing for today and her passions and her ways she contributes to the U of A. Hi, hi, Cindy. Lana, it's so great to be here chatting with you today. We've worked together for some time now, and I'm so excited for you to uh, speak more about uh, what you do at the university. And on that, I wondered if you could start with talking a little bit about your role at the university and what you do there. And also, um, I had a question today that I was hoping you could speak to specifically about uh, humor in your life and your work and all that you do, including at the university. Yes, thank you. Um, as I mentioned, I'm in the Women's and Gender Department of Women and Gender Studies, and I mainly work with, uh, I'm an artist, a visual storyteller, so I work a lot with uh, art based practices within as a teaching pedagogy. And, um, and of course, I teach through, through our language. Um, as I am learning language, I am constantly trying to share what I'm learning in that reciprocity, but also making sure I embody what I'm learning through Nehiawewen, the Cree language. And uh, I, I do a lot of work around uh, every as an as an Esquel, as a woman, as a um, mother, grandmother, wife, uh, sister, a granddaughter, all of those different roles I speak from um, to help inform and share and teach and learn in a way that's uh, reconnecting myself to this land as being that human of this land. Um, and, and a lot of my research work is, is, is about exploring those different diverse genders and 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 how we express ourselves through um, not only through our artwork but through our stories as well as through our as our bodies beautiful thank you can you talk a little bit about why it is important to reclaim neo understandings of gender for example Absolutely. Um, I mean, <laughs> it's like, where do we begin, right? Uh, I think about all of those beautiful teachings I'm reconnecting to with now and how um, if we, how they were such a prevention for a disease, how the way we were raised in Wakotuin, it 
help to develop strong, healthy human beings who um, were so connected, you know, their body, mind, and spirit and, and emotions were so connected to this land and cosmos that um, they can walk with such good health and a clear mind and, and, and constantly be in that beauty. Because of course we don't have a word for our art, but we, have, uh, we had Wawiasu that presenting our best self of constantly being in beauty because you never knew when the creator was going to call you home. I mean, that's what made life so sacred is constantly being in that presence of now and connection to the land and, and listening and, you know, and understanding and learning with with the land and with all of our relatives and of course including our more than human relatives so when i think about you know our many diverse genders i think about how the importance of how spirit comes first atzak that it wasn't gendered you know that that spirit is a light it's love it's kindness it's all those teachings we learn in Mio Pamats when in Wako Dwin those laws of that govern good relations and and so gender and sexuality was only you know a part of that having that earthly physical experience on this world and so the more we connect to those gender diversity um, those important medicines that each of those relatives brought and that we all bring because in a sense we are all of those different genders we can switch and go in and out of you know that you know humor into that um you know sometimes being that tornado kind of person of messing things up you know as an artist that's what i do all the time of destroying and recreating and the and sometimes we have to do that especially within these systems of patriarchal patriarchy and colonization and oppression is we have to resist and and deconstruct and destroy in many times to recreate those spaces and i i Love doing that with that, you know, thinking of those grandmothers who uh, prayed for me to be here, prayed for us to be here. You know, they all the work that they did to survive just for us to continue and resist and rediscover and reclaim and remember who we are as Icenuark. <laughs> hi, hi, Lana. Um, I'm going to circle back just to what I was talking about just a little while ago, too. And what role does humor play when we are resisting and deconstructing um, and the work that you're doing and the approach that you take um, in your language reclamation, for example? How does humor play a role in that? I think it's good to start with that my humor specific to Sad Lake. <laughs> I think many different nations have different uh, humors and and you know expressions of you know some reserve may say nah more than cha or er you know <laughs> like all of these different what's to get. Um, but I, I I come from a long line of you know what we know now well what we call dirty old ladies and that's where my humor comes from i you know growing up as uh my grandmother caroline whiskey jack who was uh, i mean an epic human being and 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 so courageous and strong but one of what everyone remembers about her was her humor and that she didn't shy away from difficult conversations uh, and she used humor as a tool of restoring balance or restoring power within a space or relationships. So humor was used, uh, you know, in a way to be a very powerful grandmother tool, um, not only to humble, uh, you know, a cousin or humble us as grandkids or her as son-in-laws. And, you know, she was really good at, at putting men in their place through her her humor, especially, you know, what we, we think as dirty humor, but really it's, it's that, that dirtiness comes from, of course, that Catholicism and those, you know, patriarchal kind of uh, judgments. But for her, it, to, that I've learned only in the past, you know, now that I'm 
going into that next rites of passage of, of becoming a being a grandmother and becoming growing into you know one of those new the well is um, that humor is a really important part of 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 resisting um, patriarchy, but also reclaiming our matriarchal values and and uh, and and beauty in a sense as well. Um, so yeah, our humor is beautiful. It's really deadly. If you listen to Crees in a pod, they have that deadly, you know, <laughs> uh, awesome matriarchal humor. And, and of course we're all related around that area. So there's, there's a very specific type of humor and that humor I bring into my work, my, into these spaces to kind of be one as my protector um over my spirit um as my you know uh, to laugh you know laugh in the face of patriarchy or oppression <laughs> um and uh kind of tap into that we check um energy of you know sometimes just doing silly things to uh that we intentionally or unintentionally do to help us learn to be better human beings to help us teach others as well so Humor it, yeah. It's there's there's so much to unpack on there, but <laughs> I was gonna say that I heard a rumor, but I didn't hear a rumor. I was surprisingly recruited to be a member of one of your <laughs> language groups. That is an act of uh, reclamation and has a lot of joy and humor in it. In it. Did you want to talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were trying to be secret, but um, people kept like announcing our group uh, in different social <laughs> events of gatherings. Um, so it was really funny. Yes, we call ourselves Kappa uh, Peramisquak, Laughing Beavers. And um, we're a group of, of not only women uh, who are going through that next that change, that menopause, uh, perimenopausal, but also um, our, our elders who are part of that. And some of our, our Dastawiniwak, our, our, our two spirits are a part of this group. And we have some honorary men beavers in our group because they're the ones who really, you know, hold space for a lot of our, <laughs> our beavers. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of our, <laughs> you know, taking care, <laughs> and uh, and and also, of course, being our language, our language mentors as well. But our really our group again, like how we use humor as a way to learn the language. Um, there's so much language loss within our communities. And, I, and I've been trying to learn language for all of my life. I mean, I've been around Cree. I know a lot of, you know, uh, command words. I know basic uh, conversation, but I was having a really, really hard time remembering. And so um, I was trying all different kinds of ways. I mean, I attended Blue Quills uh, for, uh, I worked there for over 12 years. I graduated from there. I took language courses in at, even at University of Alberta, barely passing, you know, and part of it was just the memorization, the way it's taught in classrooms and the way um, uh, that repeat and, you know, um, repeat and remember, but it wasn't, that way wasn't working for me. And so I kept thinking of different ways. Of course, art was an important way of learning the language of that through those different visual um, arts-based practices um, to help me unpack and 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 learn. You know, those those root words of words through my art practices was such an important um, best practice. But also through laughter. And so the gathering of. Um, are these matriarchs was really to, I offered 
protocol to some of my language mentors, asking them if they could teach, because there was a lot of women um, my age who really, uh, who were becoming grandmothers and that loss, you know, of feeling, oh my goodness, what kind of cookum am I going to be if I don't know the language, if I'm not being able to pass these beautiful teachings and worldview down to remind our Nusamak about, you know, um, who they are as I see you and their roles and responsibilities. And so, um, so the when our when we had our first gathering we started in ceremony and 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 i told them i wanted to learn in humor because it it releases so much feel-good hormones and i want i want to re get my body to body to remember the language i want that laughter and my nervous system to be comforted and loved and warmth by those words again, you know, cause English sure messed us up, <laughs> you know? And um, and so the warmth that I felt being in those circles with our, our Nukomak and Nemusumak, uh, I wanted to feel that again and learning with with other with other relatives and so it's it's grown and we do we play games like it's total body participatory kind of action uh we dance we sing it is we move our bodies to to the language and and we just have so much fun and and um yeah, and, and we always joke that we're learning how to be dirty old Cree women. Uh, <laughs> and it's helping us to move through our hot flashes and, and our rage that we feel going through this change. <laughs> here with in my own joy and laughter just listening to you and that's one of the reasons that I so enjoy working with you I have one more question to ask and then I'll pass it off to Cindy or Kyle if they have questions um, one of the things you talked about was spirit which I know is a really important part of everything you do but specifically working in the university how do you protect and care for and bring forth spirit like I'm thinking you know ceremony humor language um, but it isn't something that um, necessarily would be uh, overt at the university uh, or nurtured so how do you take nurture and protect your spirit at the university definitely um, constantly grounding myself through ceremony and there's so many you know, the daily ceremonies of smudging or just giving gratitude gakisomo, or to, you know, my art as that ceremony of going in to connect to spirit, which unfortunately I don't, this is probably my third or fourth time being in my studio in a very long time. Um, and, and especially then our, 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 our gathering collective ceremonies through, you know, those, those circles through the sharing circles through, um, um, you know, our, our Matosan, our, uh, our Nukum Tepskao, you know, gatherings around our full moon with our Squewak or, or new moons with our, with our other gender diverse. So there's so many different um, ceremonies that I, I connect with, depending, of course, on, on what I need. Um, to help me navigate these systems and ground me because we need that constant reminder uh, of not allowing our minds to be um, to be always in 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 protective mode you know or that or the that angry anger as well which happens when we have to really fight for even just to have ceremony um in in the, our spaces uh to even light a smudge in a classroom or you know so but it's those exact you know act of of connections through spirit that helps to ground us and re remember yeah remember who we are which is 
a constant, it's constant. We always have to do that foundational work of, of awina nia, who am I? Nia oma nia, I am who I am. And, and so there, that act of just being really um, thoughtful of, of being connected to that, those ways and knowing and being uh, through our ceremonies, through our kinship, our wakotoin. That gives me great, yeah, our, having, our, having these circles and these conversations supporting one another is, is what gives me great, you know, fills my heart so beautiful and so I always appreciate hearing you Lana and how you're uh, giving a voice and including the language and teaching and embodying in everything um, that you're doing and even as we're in this podcast and there's so many things that come to mind um, I think about and just seeing you it's like ah language how it's tied to our health and our well-being, like the the humor, your face lights up. Uh, it's like, oh, how that would have all helped this whole structure of being our bodies um, to be well, you know. And yeah, and those strategies with your old ladies, <laughs> your laugh, laughing beaver group. I love it. Um, and what a great teaching about how we would have learned the language, also. Right. That would have been like it's almost like reclaiming that natural way of of learning. So in the reclamation, there's this like this joy, this beauty um, and this love. So, yeah, just kind of almost rethinking about intersectional. You know, sometimes I think about the like, critiques on intersectional theory from an indigenous feminist lens. And it's like, ah, it's like love, it's joy, it's beauty, it's humor, it's truth. And that's how we can start thinking Anyway, that's kind of the pieces I'm making in terms of um, making those ties to what does intersectional health and well-being look like from that perspective. And so, yeah. And thank you for taking us into your studio. Oh, my goodness. So appreciating the gifts of your creativity there that are part of uh, our conversation um, as well. Other few things, but I'm going to ask... Uh, Kyle, I know you and Kyle have done also some incredible work uh, together over the last couple of years. So, Kyle, let's hear from you. Almost a decade, it feels like. <laughs> yeah, getting there. <laughs> yeah, since what, 2015? So, yeah, I've been working together uh, relationally, building together and supporting language uh, revitalization and, and reclamation and, and, and work and and uh, even decolonizing our own um, research uh, uh, practices and, 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 and our own conduct, you know, when we're when we're going into community, but wearing a you know, bring in, bring in you Alberta logo or whatever <laughs> on the paperwork. What does that mean? And how can we, how can we actively um, decolonize our, our, our practice and, and be true to our own values and conduct and, and protocols? So I guess that that's what I, I want to ask you about is how, how um, would you view the overlap in like conduct and protocol um, in, in, in the academy compared to like conduct and protocol because you 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 run of course whiskey jack art house um what is it like working with artists and artist conduct and protocol um contrasted with working with community um uh, with your with the researcher hat <laughs> that's a good question uh as an artist um and and a curator uh you know, working with artists is that we're definitely our own type of gender, in a sense, our own type of tribe. <laughs> we're we're very uh, fluid people, and and um, so our minds think differently, and it's 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 a different way of working with our our you know our our creators, destroyers, uh, our our you know, visual storytellers. And so um, definitely takes um, uh, how would it, how would I uh, <laughs> say 
When I think about like working in the academy and the difference with that, with um, there's a lot more different structure with working with artists. It's a lot more fluid. You know, you're dealing with all kinds of 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 stories unraveling in in a sense and I have to speak about it in a metaphor because just the diversity in our different for our artists and because they're constantly being in a uh in a in a creative mode they are to me they're always working in it within and within different spiritual physical realms right where working in the academy is just physical mental but when you're working with artists you're working with emotional and spiritual and and so those are two different types of energies to navigate and so the protocols and approaching them of course you know with the academy you have paperwork you have policies you have but with working with our artists you have that's where our walk go to win all of those laws come in to approaching our artists and and working within that space of of co-learning of co-mentoring and of uh um being vulnerable in a sense to walk into those different spaces cuz you never know i i know it's kind of a little bit more abstract but i i like it it's hard to articulate that that different energy with which our artists work in and i can see why you know how art is such a powerful resistance as well as a teacher because the metaphors that we use to share stories are profound and so multi-layered and so i think yeah how it it, it yeah i'm i'm constantly being in between and it's something that's why i'm so art based it's like this is what i know this is the language i can speak and it's a it's a language it's a it's my it's my ceremonial bundle to work within that like my art my art tools are my, is part of my bundle of being in between those spaces so and i know that for so many of our our artists like they're powerful beings that are working within those different realms uh what you remind me of uh lana in your articulating kind of navigating both spaces is also i think what's important that artists bring within the academy is disrupting how we produce knowledge right like you're saying it's hard to articulate imagine that it's hard to articulate that our those approaches or ways of thinking and being in a in a book chapter or in a paper right and so there are so many other ways in which that we can think about knowledge making or knowledge creating and through the arts and so i i want to acknowledge that because i think that increasingly we are you know we're, we even we're start a project on research creation like it's kind of going outside of these traditional ways of how we think knowledge has to be shared communicated given a voice to and so i think it's so important to also speak about that in our roles in the academy as we as kind of going between both but increasingly making that as legitimate as a valid way to give a voice to what we want to give a voice to to those experiences to those complexities that that can't be only expressed in the english language in an academic paper in so many ways and so how that is a powerful way of, of of interrupting as well right and interrupting with that like you said even the language has a resonance that interrupts even the language interrupts the the images interrupt the love interrupts right the the beauty interrupts and what an what an exquisite way to think about also interrupting yes we need protests and we need those things we need many ways to interrupt right so anyway those are uh the things that come to mind um in listening and reflecting on the power of art space what we call art space and and i remember um when i was up in mushkwagwak territory working with artists Uh, not as as a traditional artist for some sense but i asked a language keeper how do you say artist in the language and he says well firstly there is artist is not even in the language which was just so wonderful to hear and there was you know quite a few of us sitting there and he says it's the one who reflects 
you know, and, and I, that always stuck with me. That always stayed with me in terms of even interrupting how we think about art and artists in that sense from the perspective. And I don't remember what the term was in the language, in the Umashkwekwak language, but the description of it always stayed with me. And um, yeah, and I carry that teaching, you know. So yeah, merci for, we could probably keep visiting and having uh, so many threads to, to keep pulling on and weaving on. Um, but I want to say, yeah, thank you for, for that, those teachings and for sharing. And, and um, Amanda, Kyle, is there anything else? Or you, Lana? Uh, we have a few more minutes left in, term, in our podcast. And if there's any kind of final thoughts or reflections or questions that, um, that you want to share. I think um, just kind of think tying both like the laughter, the the art of laughing, the art of visual storytelling, the art of community engaged work, um, you know, is that when we're in our intimate spaces or finding our, our circle where we can fully be ourselves and expressing ourselves of sharing and lifting this, our own spirit, but the spirit of others, is such an important um, way of, of self-love and to care. But it's also a way of protection. Like when we talk about building courageous spaces or, you know, um, you know, my grandmother's laughter as that tool of, 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 of protection, you know, it's, it's really, um, it's, you know, through laughter, that tone, that sound, uh, that travels just like singing does it is a release but it also communicates to others um you know that they that you that you when you're laughing you are in your autonomy you are in your power you know and so i feel like i've used laughter in in many different situations from you know uh from defending myself from racism from you know laughing at you know attempts of of some kind of violence laughter has been really important part of that protection and so I think about, you know, the work that we do in our community, laughter has been a part of actually being able to speak about really, really difficult things from gender to sexual violence. We were able to talk about through these really, you know, serious, you know, very triggering and very, but it's through laughter that we're able to liberate ourselves and unload um, that, that heaviness from shame, um, from guilt, from, you know, that these patriarchal and very colonized systems have ingrained in us. So I, I think, you know, when I think about laughter, that importance that we, we really connect to our laughter, like we connect to learning how to cry again, again, connecting to how do we laugh again so that we we're not carrying so much of this colonial BS, <laughs> you know, I'm like, what's a nice way of saying this, but I can't find another English word that <laughs> expresses that. So I, yes, if I can bring at least one student laughing, you know, in our, some of our very difficult conversations, I feel like I've, I've accomplished some good colonial, um, uh, restructuring, <laughs> re-renovating, decolonial de renovating <laughs> through laughter and art, arting. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, hi. Oh, uh, hi, hi. Thank you so much for reminding us of the importance of laughter and humor in many different ways to consider it. Um, yeah, for your teachings, for your gift, for all our listeners so many things to sit with that we will continue to have tea over as kyle often says so merci for joining us lana and of course amanda and kyle and look forward to laughing more laughter and more love and more beauty and joy um, in everything that you do and everything that we're all doing together collectively so merci